What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 241 of the Smart Cat Moment Smack Talk Podcast. I am your host, Tony Mango, and joining me on the panel for this episode is Steven Wago. I am joining you. On the Tony panel. Oh, man, the Tony panel. Yeah. Oh. There's going to be a back panel, but I'm not into construction. <laughs> So, we are going to be doing something differently this week. I had mentioned something in the Mega Maniacs chat that I'm thinking about tweaking the setup of Smack Talk and possibly breaking it up into a couple different things throughout the week. And the way that I wanted to kind of show this off to everybody to see if they're interested in it is I'm going to do sort of a uh, test run here. So, we're going to start off not with the Ask Him. We're going to start off with the Hot Tags. In Part 2, I'm going to take care of the Ask Him and the Rest Hold combined. And then we're going to get into our main event for this week, which is going to be a mock draft that you guys were asking for us to do for the WWE brand split. We're going to pick our own people as if we were the Raw and SmackDown general managers and kind of see what could end up happening when it comes to what WWE is going to do, which I think is going to be Shane and Stephanie, but we still don't know about that. Uh, No Fantasy League this week. And uh, if we have anything that happens when it comes to that, then we'll let you guys know in the Mega Maniacs chat and all that other kind of stuff. But um, normally this is where I would go into the Ask Him, but instead we're going to go into Hot Tags. So the Hot Tags are breaking down some news, rumors, interesting stories and whatnot from the past few days in the world of sports entertainment and professional wrestling. And a couple things have happened so far. I'm going to get into the main, main thing at the end here of Brock Lesnar's opponent and what we hope and ends up happening with that. But before we get into that, let's talk about a little lukewarm tags. Uh, Cody Rhodes is going to guest star on Arrow. I don't know exactly what he's going to do yet. They said that he can't do the Stardust character because obviously that doesn't make any sense and he's not in WWE anymore. But what do you think about Cody Rhodes going to the acting side of things, kind of uh, doing the opposite of what Stephen Amell did? I kind of dig this. Um, it's he's gonna find. It means he's finding success outside of the WWE. It's also justification for him leaving, showing that he can get opportunities outside of them. And the more I see of Cody Rhodes outside of his WWE career, it's just more impactful that uh, WWE fucked up. They should have kept him. They should have done a lot more to keep him. They should have treated him the right way. And Cody's proven that. I don't know how he's going to do on um, Arrow, but it can't be any worse than how bad the season's got anyway. Can't be any worse than what happened when they had a couple people go over to Smallville. They had um, Batista, Ashley Massaro, if I remember correctly, and they were terrible. So Cody's not the best actor in the world, but he could end up playing a decent character or something. And... He could play a very eccentric villain. I hope he's not like a stardusty villain. Like it would be great if he's just like a bank teller or some shit. <laughs> or it's like he's Batman. <laughs> you just gotta bring him in for one episode and it's fucking Cody Rhodes. <laughs> but I like it. I mean, I don't watch Arrow anymore. I stopped watching the show after they killed off Laurel. And that just kind of proved to me that they didn't know what the hell they were doing. So, oh no, I like enjoyed it when more when they killed Laurel. I think she's one of the worst characters they've ever had. She got so much better though. She was p- so poorly fucking written. I have a drug addiction. I'm okay now, but now I have it back again. I'm okay now, but now my dad's got one. <laughs> Fuck this show. Yeah, I will agree that that was uh, first two seasons. Laurel was terrible, and uh, Felicity was great. And then they did a full one eighty, and Laurel became decent, and Felicity sucked. And now it's like, uh, you know, I'm checking out it's a stuff because Felicity was one of my favorite characters for a while too. She was really good on the show, and then they just they switched the showrunners when the Flash happened because they got uh, Mark Guggenheim and all those like the the team basically like split in half and you've got uh the people that were like they knew what they were doing they went over to flash and that's why flash is still awesome but cody Rhodes going on arrow makes sense to me i think that that's something that's like kind of cool and man if they knew that this brand split was happening why the hell didn't they just go yeah dude we'll use you a lot even if they were gonna lie to him you know it seems weird I don't know why they wouldn't keep him. He's easily one of the most talented guys on their roster. He's an easy mid-carder champion um, on any brand split uh, with the whole like talent getting chopped up. And honestly, there's no reason you couldn't have uh, not put him in a full-on main event role because, to be quite honest, I don't think he is a main eventer. 
but he's definitely that upper mid card guy who could get a one off title run. Mm-hmm. Especially on a SmackDown where they they don't kind of care as much. Well, I'm hoping they change that dynamic and they care about both brands, but <laughs> we'll fucking yeah. see. Well, yeah, we'll see what ends up happening when it comes to that. Um, another hot tag that we have here, Jerry the King Lawler's suspension has been lifted. So we were right. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically from everything that I've heard, uh, we were right. Drunken, stupid, young bitch that doesn't know how to handle a liquor. Um, Jerry dealt with it, probably not in the most responsible way. And now he's good. Yeah. So good to see that there's no backlash when it comes to that, where they're not like, yeah, but we still don't like the idea that you were involved in this situation, which that kind of stuff is ridiculous. Like when you would be in high school and somebody would uh, get into a fight and the other person would get in trouble too because it was like, well, you did get into a fight. Uh, like, yeah, it was total bullshit. What I don't like um, right now is I'm seeing a lot of backlash online for Adam Rose. People are going, well, Adam Rose wasn't given a second chance. Well, first off, let's just be blunt. One of them is Jerry fucking Lawler and the other is Adam fucking Rose. <laughs> Jerry Lawler is a multiple time champion. He is beloved within the industry. He has years and years of experience still going on in the ring, accomplished as a commentator and found new life in that role recently. Adam Rose sucks. Yeah, he just had gotten suspended for the wellness policy violation. That's what too. I was about to bring up. Um, so like, just putting aside that it's one's Jerry Lawler and the other's fucking Adam Rose. There was a wellness violation. Now, if you want to argue that, and I've heard this, want to argue, oh, well, it was Adderall. It shouldn't have been treated that way. I don't care. If you sign up for a wellness violation, wellness, if you sign up to the WWE and you've signed something agreeing to the wellness policy, you should read the wellness policy top to bottom, mm -hmm. figure out everything. And before you ever take a medicine, I don't care if you have an outside doctor that's qualified, you go to the WWE doctors and go, can I put this substance in my body, yes or no? Right. Especially if you're on shaky grounds because you failed before and you suck. <laughs> and there's also more to this, which is another point where I think Adam Rose fucked himself. He made a public stink about the wellness policy violation. Yeah, talked about how he's going to be exonerated, and it was like, no, dude, you're going to get fired. That's you're gonna get, like, so for anyone comparing the two situations... Is there similarity? Sure, but for the better part, it's a very different story. One guy has value, the other guy doesn't. One guy made a public stink about something, the other guy didn't. He probably tried to keep it on the down low, if anything. And Adam Rose has gone out of his way just to be a fucking cock, so screw it. Plus, it kind of seems like the Jerry Lawler abuse didn't happen, yeah. and the Adam Rose stuff did. I mean, yeah, that's there has a fucking been... big point. One's guilty, one isn't. Yeah, <laughs> like we don't know for sure, but it seems like there's been nothing that exonerates him from actually hitting his wife. So, as far as I'm concerned, couldn't be too different. Like, couldn't be any like more justified for Jerry in his situation. Did he handle it poorly to a degree? But Adam Rose just went out there and pretty much said a fuck you to WWE. Right. You can't blame him. And now you can't he's blame Aldo him. Rose. Yep. Fucking off somewhere. So I just wanted to bring that up. I kept seeing it on forums, and it was beginning to piss me off. Uh, what do we have here? WWE's trademarked a new thing for a new television show, but there's no information about it, so speculation time per usual. It's called WWE Story Time. Well, I imagine they're <laughs> going to tell stories. I just hope that it's not like Titus O'Neil sitting around reading books to his kids. It could be something like that. Maybe they're trying to cater towards the um, younger demographic on the network because obviously they've been catering towards the older demographic with shows like Swerved and shows like um, Camp WWE. I don't think it's going to be another Road Stories type thing because we've already got that with Table for Three. I'm not sure what dynamic they're going to take with this. It's going to be like Paige reading Dr. Seuss. He's going to be like, this is a mouse. This is a blouse. This is my house. <laughs> what I think could be a good option for them to do is take, say, incidents that are publicly known and just tell the story or incidents in the WWE, WCW, etc. that have happened, but like the full light isn't shed on it, and just have everybody tell their perspective. Obviously, you avoid the Montreal screw job. It's been done a million times, but... They'd probably do that on the first episode. <laughs> yeah, they probably would. Um, they probably retell the Monday Night Wars again because they've got all the stock footage. Uh, but 
They're just like, hey, Brett, can you we give us uh, another sound bite of you saying that you got raped? <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't said that in a week. Sure. Like, I don't know, fucking the plane ride from hell. I'm sure they'd never do something on that level. But wouldn't that be cool to get everyone's perspective from that? So, Linda, how did you feel almost having Ric Flair pee on you? <laughs> um, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Tons of personality, per usual. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like that. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem a little bit of a childish name, though, story time. Like, you would think if it would be something serious, they'd call it, like, WWE flashback or, you I mean, know. they've done children's shows before. Let's not mm-hmm. forget about that terrible whatever city it was. I watched one episode and was like, nah. Um, Slam City. Oh, fuck off! Oh, it's so terrible. Slam City, Slam, Slam City. Voices were terrible too. John Cena, he's like delivering pizzas and shit. It's, like, <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> awful. I hated that show so much. And then that other show was good, the uh, cheap pop one, where uh, it was like Kane changing into different forms of himself. It was like a oh yeah, it was Caribbean kind of, Kane. It was almost Camp WWE, but not as vulgar. Right. It was tongue and cheek. Then they did like. Two episodes on YouTube or something, and that was it. Yeah, apparently it got pulled because of a certain... I don't remember what it was, but something um, upset them, and they just never continued. They were like, hey guys, you know how WWE makes mistakes once in a while? Fuck you, you don't get your show anymore. <laughs> and I'm really curious what ends up happening with this, although I hope it's not something too childish. Like, End of I... the day, if it is too childish, don't watch it. Problem solved. And the day, They've got to have... Stuff that caters to everybody on the network, including stuff that doesn't cater towards us, but to some other audience. Nah, they should just cater to me. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it is flawless logic, right? <laughs> I would enjoy it. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You'd fucking be pissed off. Oh, this is still, this is so predictable. They're just doing things they know I'd like. <laughs> oh, God. Everything I turn on is just something that I like. <laughs> Why can't I just have to, like, you know, not like something every once in a while? There are people that would probably think that way, too. That's what's so ridiculous about people. Probably. God, every pay-per-view is, like, fucking amazing. <laughs> They're oversaturating me on goodness. I need some shit. <laughs> yeah. Just put on, like, a TNA thing every once in a while, motherfuckers. Oh, God, did you uh, hear that a lot of people were watching that TNA uh, match with Matt Hardy? It was Fi- called The Final, the final deletion. deletion. I have not checked it out, and I am avoid checking it out, because I think it's going to... A lot of people are saying it's amazing and the greatest thing they've ever seen. Majority of people are saying it is so bad that it's good. I ain't watching that shit. Mm-mm. I saw a hologram of Matt Hardy, and I was like, nah. A hologram? Yeah, there's a screenshot floating around a... Jeff watching a hologram of Matt Hardy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's no way I'm watching this thing unless everybody leaves a comment below and says, like, no, guys, you have to fucking watch this. Like, if it's that bad that I have to see it, or if it's that good and I'm just not giving it credit, sure, but I'm not going out of my way to watch that shit. I watched that terrible segment they had where um, Matt put Jeff through the table at the side of the ring, and I'm still recovering. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even watch the director's cut. <laughs> It's just so terrible. Yeah, you didn't know there was an extended version. I'm glad you didn't watch it. Oh, uh. Uh, one good thing, though, is Jeff Hardy is not going to be coming back to WWE, according to the latest rumor mill. Because well, that's a shame. I actually like Jeff. I'd rather, like, as long as Matt ain't coming back. Well, I figured if Jeff came back, Matt probably would follow, too. It would just kind of be like, hey, guys, Hardy boys, huh? Final I don't please. know if they do that. They actually, like, Jeff actually has some value commercially and just generally is better than his brother. He probably has, like, some good drugs to sell, too, that if, like, it came down to it, they could be like, yeah, we could get some money off of this. I just don't think, like, I think a lot of the criticism on Jeff Hardy is invalid. Uh, at the end of the day, his last run, he was very successful and pretty much outsold everybody merchandise-wise. Mm-hmm. He's fun in the ring, proven draw. I got no issues with Jeff. Matt Hardy, on the other hand? <laughs> yeah. Well, the latest scuttlebutt is that Jeff Hardy, Rey Mysterio, and Kurt Angle are all not coming back and that they aren't really even in talks with them. Uh, the Jeff Hardy situation, it seems that's more so they Tied don't trust him. Uh, I imagine, I imagine uh, he's contracted still. He might be, because a lot of things going around now are that if you've got something that's like uh, an abuse situation or like a drug situation, that they're staying clear a lot of those people, which is one of the main reasons why Kurt Angle is not coming back. And the other thing is the contractual stuff. That ain't the reason why Kurt Angle's coming back. Kurt Angle 
cannot compete anymore. I don't care if he's doing it on an indie and knocking it out of the park. The guy should be retired. He's fucked. Completely. He cannot rotate his neck. He cannot look side to side. He's fucked. Well, I would assume that they would still want him back, even if he was just doing, like, a manager thing or something, you know? I think they'd bring him back. There's not much value in Kurt Angle unless he's a wrestler. He's got more value as a trainer. Um... Like, I don't, like, I'd love to see Kurt Angle back, but if he's in that bad of health that I saw at the Bellator show and everybody's reporting, there's no reason that he should come back. And I, I'm actually shocked how many people thought, like, thought it was a done deal. I mean, he could come back to fucking on Monday and just prove me a cunt, but <laughs> I don't see, like, it's, it's one of the most unlikely returns that I've heard people talking about so much. And I'm like, Why? What has he done to, like, make you think that? Okay, cool He's... theme. <laughs> it's about... <laughs> uh, like, I've never... Like, I never once thought Kurt Angle was coming back. I never understood the fucking um, hype and the buzz for that. I'm expecting them to come back, but not right now. Like, I Bra- honestly would Bray have been shocked. Back. No, I don't think Ray's coming back either. Uh, he's going to miss us WWE paychecks when he gets older. Yeah, but you know what? I don't think WWE is going to want to pay him. Um, I think they will just because of certain reasons. Callisto, bust. Alberto Dorio, bust. Callisto, Dana Brooke, bust. bust. <laughs> Sin Cara, bust. Every Mexican talent that they have bought in has fallen on their ass. Now, some people might say Del Rio's still successful. Yeah, but if you think he's near half as successful as they wanted, you're wrong. Yeah, and he's not going to be switching that up anytime soon. No, it's like Del Rio only got to a certain level because Del Rio's only capable of getting to a certain level. No, I just thought he's going to get such an upgrade when it comes to this brand split. Oh, you better believe it. He's going to be a fucking main eventer again. Uh, oh, yeah, he will. Uh, <laughs> he'll, be a, he'll be a world champion again, I'm pretty confident. It'll be a very lackluster run, but when we've got 700 money in the bank matches this year, uh, next year, he'll be able to win. No, oh, heart hurts now. Uh, the last hot tag that I have here is something that I originally planned that we were going to be talking about who Brock Lesnar's opponent is and whatever you think that's going to be a good match or whatever when it comes to SummerSlam, but they didn't announce it. They're kind of being dicks about it. They're just going to insert that during the broadcast tomorrow night. We're recording this Wednesday afternoon for all those uh, listening. So we don't know who the opponent is going to be, but since we don't know, then we're going to switch it up a little bit and just go with speculation. So my first thought was that it's going to be announced that it's Randy Orton. The Randy Orton. I figure that's something that makes sense. He's a big name. He could come back and get a win off of Brock Lesnar if they want to kind of job Lesnar out for doing this whole UFC thing. And Randy Orton could use that win. If and it's a match. Him. It's also a Brock Lesnar match we've not seen. They never wrestled at all, right? Uh, you know what, even if they wrestled back in 2000 and whatever Brock Lesnar was around, Orton would have been a no-name practically, or still re- re- um, relatively new. And Brock Lesnar from yesterday is not the same as Brock Lesnar from today. You didn't hear people going, well, Lesnar already wrestled John Cena in 2004. Now, you know what I think could be a detractor for this? Randy Orton's injury prone. Yeah. Now, if they have Lesnar throwing him around like a rag doll, Randy Orton could just get injured again. And he's coming right off of an injury. Like, they might not be willing well, to you, risk that. If he if he's not well enough to take back bumps, then he shouldn't be wrestling, period. That's a good point. Like, if he's that fucked that he can't take a, if he can't wrestle one high-impact match, then he needs to hang up his boots. Like, no offense. I think he's, if not the best wrestler in the company, one of the best wrestlers in the company. With that said, if you cannot get in there without hurting yourself badly, then you just shouldn't be in there. Not just for your own health, but the health of everyone else that's got to work with you. Stupid. <laughs> and that's the thing. If Lesnar does hurt him, Lesnar oh, ain't going to be able to do shit about it. <laughs> He's not going to be like bitching and complaining yeah. backstage. It's just going to be like, yeah, I'm sorry that I took that move wrong, Brock. And he'll be like, yeah, it's your fault. But um, one cool thing about this match is Orton is one of the few believable guys that could beat Lesnar because of his RKO. Think of all the situations Lesnar can throw him around and Orton can catch him in an RKO. Yeah, even just uh, holding him up for an F5. 
Mm-hmm. Not like if he spins him out for the F5, I'm sure he could contort around to that for an RKO. Now, if it's not Randy Orton, because there's nothing that says for sure that it is, some other people that I think it could possibly be are Sheamus. Although I wouldn't rule that as, like, a, you know, the next choice. Hasn't he been losing to, like, Apollo Crews? I don't think that's going to be an option. It depends kind of, I think, when, if they want Lesnar to look like a strong guy coming out of it, like they want him to just beat another person, or if they want that person to beat Lesnar. Because Sheamus ain't beating Lesnar. But if they want to feed him someone, that could work. And the same could go with Alberto Del Rio. I think that that could be a match. Kevin Owens is a guy that I think is going to wrestle him at some point. You know, it'd be just cool if they just wanted to throw a total, like, you were never going to expect this and would, I think people would get a kick out of Nakamura. I would not expect it. So at the very least, it would be like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, just imagine, yeah, we're bringing up this new talent and his first opponent's going to be Lesnar. And they've yeah. wrestled before. So, like, it's not like they're going to be uh, too foreign from each other. You know what, though? If you want Nakamura to go up to Raw or SmackDown and you want him to get a huge push right off the bat, you have him beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam? I know it's insane and, like, they're not going to ever do it in a million years, but just fucking imagine. That would be kind of crazy. Samoa Joe's another option. That would be a fun match. I definitely have Lesnar win, but it would be fun. Just because of how physical it is. And I don't think Joe would pull punches either. No, I think that that would end up being, like, they'd get their asses kicked. Yeah, like, I think Joe fun. would be like, oh, you hit me hard. I'm gonna hit you hard, too. This is fun. No, nation of violence. I'm gonna get out my knife. <laughs> uh, uh, some other main roster people, though, I mean, uh, they've done a lot of the matches before, so I really hope that they don't just do a repeat. Like, they can't have, like, well, he's gonna be the one that challenges Dean Ambrose. Mm, no. You know, I mean, if you look at the main event scene, Cena, beat him. Roman Reigns, beat him. Ambrose, beat him. Seth, beat him. Um, the only guys that you've really got is Chris Jericho, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles. And Cesaro, I guess, but he's not really a main eventer. Yeah, Cesaro's the other guy I was thinking that that could be a possibility. Or, this should... and this is such a stretch that I, I really don't th- see this happening. I, I can see the Nakamura thing happening more, but maybe, maybe Baron Corbin. Nah. It ain't happening, but that, like... It's you know, much more likely that Baron Corbin will fight Lesnar than, like, um, I don't know, Heath Slater. You know who I could have seen it being if um, Big Cass if Enzo was still injured? Big Cass? Huh. I mean, not now. Now it's, now it's not going to happen. But, uh, but what, if, what if he ended up having, like, a triple threat match or something like that? Like... I think it's going to be a one-on-one match. I've heard a lot of people throwing Owens around there, but the issue is that mid-card that's been feuding for the IC title have no momentum whatsoever. Like, not one guy is being consistently pushed. So I don't think it's going to be a mid-card. I think it's either going to be Chris Jericho, Randy Orton, and if they want to wrap this Cena, AJ Styles feud up, it could be Styles. You know, I didn't think about Jericho, but Jericho's a possibility. I mean, why not? He's uh, one of the most... Like, Lesnar is... Not a babyface or a heel. He's just Brock Lesnar. He gets cheered despite everything else or booed if it's a babyface in the ring. It doesn't really matter. So they could put him against Jericho. They could put him against Styles. It doesn't matter. And Styles would be an interesting uh, feud because they've got the Bullet Club to get their ass kicked by Lesnar. <laughs> he just like starts chucking Carl Anderson into the front row and shit. <laughs> yeah, I, you see um... it? He'll take a German suplex ski. Oh God, I hate that so much. It's so dumb. It's you know so what? dumb. It's gonna catch on. I really hope I it guarantee doesn't. it's gonna catch on. He's gonna push it and it's gonna work. I went through my notes for the uh, end of the year awards and added that in as my top choice right now for the worst catchphrase. Oh, I'm gonna have it as the best just as a fuck you. <laughs> Uh, well, make sure you guys le- uh, leave a comment below and tell us what you think about these different things. Do you like the ski thing? <laughs> you got to point out what it's good about that if you do. I like uh, it as much as um, Anderson's uh, hot wife ski. Uh, if the wife is as hot as I'm imagining her to be, she's so much better than the skis. Not just hot, hot and Asian. Yeah. Which oh, is shit, like it's Oscar. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> That's how they're going to bring her up to the main roster. Oskoski. Oski. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, who would you like to see Brock Lesnar fight at SummerSlam? Leave that comment below as well. Are you upset that Angle, Hardy, and Mysterio might not be coming back? What do you think story time is going to be? Is it going to be Titus O'Neil just, uh, you know, talking to his kids and giving them a kiss goodnight? And the Papa Mwah. Bear said, <laughs> <laughs> And what character should Cody Rhodes play on uh, Arrow? Uh, all those different things just drop a line. And we are going to not go into uh, the normal rest hold, but the next part is going to be the rest hold along with the Ask Him Wrestling Trivia Question of the Week. Switching it up a little bit, as I mentioned earlier, so make sure that you guys tune into that. Check out what ends up happening with the Ask Him and so forth. And after that, we're going to come back with our main event for this episode, which is going to be our mock draft in part three. <laughs> 